We're happy that visitors want to come to our historic houses. But for the house, the experience isn't always happy. Along with our visitors come dirt, snow, mud, and water. From the point of view of your historic floor, the dirt on this shoe may as well be sandpaper. Your first line of defense is to stop this dirt before it gets into the house. Sweep the path to the house frequently and keep a clean doormat in place. Where appropriate, use runners to catch dirt. Check around doors and windows for gaps that let dirt and bugs get in. Report any gaps you find and repair them if possible. Some sites have found that shoe coverings for visitors are extremely effective in reducing the amount of dirt tracked in and in protecting floors and carpets. The coverings are reusable in addition to being very stylish. In the war against dirt, the vacuum is your best friend. Use a canister type with floor and crevice attachments. Be careful not to knock furniture or woodwork. Hold that mop. Wet mops may get dirt out, but they bring moisture in and soaps dissolve finishes. Particularly around collection materials, wet floors raise humidity and accelerate rust and other humidity related damage. If wet mopping has been approved for tracked in mud or other wet dirt, use a well wrung out string mop after vacuuming or dust mopping. In your campaign against dirt, it can be hard to tell who is on your side and who is against you. Soaps, cleansers, and cleaning cloths would seem to be your friends, but be careful. Cleaning cloths can turn against you if you use the wrong one. Flannel and terry cloth pick up dirt and leave lint. Not much of an improvement. Even worse, loose threads of some cloths can catch on unstable veneers. Use only soft, dry, absorbent cotton cloth or magnetic dust cloths. Magnetic dust cloths, also known as electrostatic wipes, are designed to attract dust. These should not be confused with chemically treated cloths. Dust particles cling to the magnetic cloth rather than being spread about from one location to another. Cleansers are also problematic. Many popular cleansers contain mineral oils that leave a film, solvents that can damage wood, or abrasives capable of destroying finishes. For most interior woodwork, you should use non-ionic detergents, such as Triton or PhotoFlow, or an anionic detergent, such as Orvis paste. Although it is not considered best practice to mix cleaning solutions in historic spaces, in some cases, this is unavoidable. In situations that call for dissolving the detergent in water, use water that is warm, not hot or hard. If you have hard water, substitute distilled. Make a weak solution using much less detergent than the manufacturer recommends. Use just enough to make a ring of bubbles in the bucket when you swirl it with your hand. To start cleaning, moisten a clean absorbent cloth in your detergent solution and test the surface in an inconspicuous place to be sure it is stable. Gently clean the soiled area using moderate pressure. Do not scrub or use elbow grease on painted or varnished surfaces. Work slowly and carefully. Check the cloth frequently for traces of paint or finish accidentally being removed. Wipe the area with clean water and follow immediately with a soft, dry cloth. It's hard to imagine an historic house without spiders and cobwebs. One way to remove cobwebs is with this specially designed tool. You can also use a dust mop fitted with a magnetic cloth cover. The first step in cleaning walls and ceilings is to be sure the surface is secure.
Look for flaking or blistering. If the ceiling is flaking, cover furniture before dusting. Flaking and blistering ceilings or walls often indicate leaking or other structural problems. Report any changes in conditions that you find in your inspection. If the surface is secure, dust from top to bottom with a long-handled dust mop fitted with a clean absorbent cotton or magnetic cloth cover. Sweep the walls gently from top to bottom, changing the cloth as it becomes dirty. If the walls are very dusty, vacuum with a round brush and or the floor brush attachment to contain the dust and keep it from being redistributed around the room. Never use treated cloth for dusting. Using a spray to clean windows makes as much sense as spraying them with paint. There's no telling where the spray will go, and you end up with a bigger mess than you started with. Avoid commercial cleaning products. They often contain silicone or detergents that leave filmy residues that are difficult to remove. Start window cleaning by making a solution of equal parts distilled water and isopropyl alcohol. Add a few drops of household ammonia and pour the solution into a clean, empty spray bottle. Be sure to label the bottle. Dampen a clean, soft cloth by cupping the nozzle with the cloth and spraying carefully into it. Wipe the window pane with moderate pressure. Don't let the cleaning solution contact varnished or painted wood surfaces, which can be harmed by the alcohol in the solution. Polish with a dry, soft, lint-free cloth or chamois leather. On careful inspection, this window has a thin plastic ultraviolet absorbent material or UV control film. You may also find UV absorbent materials in solid plexiglass sheets that fit over windows. Placed on a window, it is like sunglasses for a house and its collections. It absorbs ultraviolet rays, which can break down fabrics and wreak havoc with colors. It is a great material, but it is easily damaged by cleaning. Dust UV absorbent film with a soft brush and wipe with a water dampened cloth. For heavier cleaning, refer to the manufacturer's instructions. Mirror glass is cleaned in much the same way as you clean window glass. Dampen cloth in window cleaning solution and wipe the mirror in a circular motion. Use the same technique on glass covering framed works. Moisture can damage frames, so be careful not to touch the frame with a damp cloth. When cleaning marble, stone, plaster, and composition elements, use soft brushes, cloth, or the soft round vacuum brush. If there's a lot of dust, use brushes to loosen dirt and dust and a vacuum to catch falling debris. Highly polished marble can be wiped with a dampened cloth if necessary. Before cleaning gold leafed or gold colored architectural elements such as moldings or medallions, check to ensure that the surface is very stable. If there is any doubt, consult with a conservator. Never wet clean gilded surfaces. When cleaning wallpaper, remember that historic wallpaper really is paper. Paper that's bound to plaster with paste. One unstable material on top of another. Even gentle dusting can be abrasive to these surfaces. Consult a specialist before doing anything with wallpaper. For routine cleaning of ceramic and glass fixtures and hardware, dust with a soft brush or magnetic wipe. Apply window cleaning solution with cotton balls or a diaper to remove heavier soil. 
this is an example of how overly zealous cleaning of one thing, the doorknob, ends up damaging another, the surrounding wood. Use a dry cloth or magnetic wipe for routine cleaning. If wet cleaning or polishing metal hardware, use extreme caution not to damage the surrounding wood finish. More information about cleaning different kinds of metal appears later in this video. Let's review some of the main points we discussed about cleaning architectural elements. Keep walks swept to limit the dirt that is tracked in. Put down mats to control dirt when it comes in. Use the vacuum cleaner, not the mop. If you have to mop, use a mop that is damp, never wet. Avoid commercial cleaning products. Test surfaces for stability before cleaning. Report any changes you find. Clean windows with a solution of isopropyl alcohol. Don't spray windows. Finally, if you are in doubt about the need for cleaning or the stability of a surface, don't clean. Knowing when not to clean is as important as knowing how to clean. <laughs>